All right, I think we have to go to Tickety Boo News. Let's do it. All right, today is World Poetry Day. So I'm going to read a short poem, one of the great poems. I decided since it's World Poetry Day, I'm going to read what I believe, and it may, if I'm not, if there's one I'm not thinking of, you can write and tell me, I believe is the greatest poem ever written about reading poetry. Okay, and it's by John Keats, my favorite poet, called On First Looking Into Chapman's Homer. And just to give you a little background, uh, in Keats's time, which is this time we're talking about, this time of the transition from the uh, Enlightenment age or the age of reason to the Romantic era, the, the translations of Homer were very formal and polite. But Chapman was this medieval translator who had given a much more earthy translation. And so one night he and a pal um, sat up, this is George Chapman, he and a pal uh, named George Cowden Clark uh, sat up together reading the Chapman's Homer. And it was a revelation to Keats. And Keats was, sh uh, Clark said, Keats was shouting with delight as some passage of a special energy struck his imagination. And at 10 o'clock the next morning, Clark woke up and he found this sonnet, one of Keats's earliest and greatest sonnets, on his breakfast table. The sonnet was lying there. And the sonnet talks about Keats is talking about, he says, much of I traveled in the realms of gold. And he's talking about traveling through the literary world, the world of the imagination, the world that the bards in fealty to Apollo hold. Apollo was the god of poetry. So he's talking about traveling through this world, but he never, and he traveled through the expanse of Homer's world, but he'd never really seen it until he read Chapman's translation. And then, and this is the important part, he compares the experience of reading Chapman's translation to all the scientific discovery and all the new world discovery that was going on. He said, when I read Chapman's translation, it felt like I was discovering a new planet because I, I think it was Uranus had just been discovered. And it felt like uh, discovering the Pacific. And he makes one of the most famous mistakes in literature. He says Cortez discovered the Pacific. It was actually Balboa and um, he, he was told that it was a mistake and said, I won't change it because I need that extra syllable <laughs> for, for my sonnet. But, but he, what he is saying is all this science is great. All this discovery is great. The new world, it's all great. But the most important discovery is still the internal search for yourself, for the, the thing that art gives you, the thing that God gives you, guarantees and shows you the way toward. That is what matters. And all these people who are talking about now how science has done such miracles, it really has done such miracles, the diseases that ravage the world are gone. Uh, our age expectancy, our life expectancy is so much greater. Famine, virtually gone. All these things are wonderful, but... They don't mean a thing if you ain't got your life, your inner life, and people's lives mattered even when th there was famine, even when there was disease, their lives mattered to them because of this internal search which art helps and which religion helps. So here's John Keats on World Poetry Day on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Much have I traveled in the realms of gold, and many goodly states and kingdoms seen, Round many western islands have I been, which bards in fealty to Apollo hold. Oft of one wide expanse had I been told that deep-browed Homer ruled as his demean. Yet did I never breathe its pure serene till I heard Chapman speak out loud and bold. Then felt I like some watcher of the skies when a new planet swims into his ken, or like stout Cortez when with eagle eyes he stared at the Pacific and all his men looked at each other with a wild surmise, silent upon a peak in Darien. I'm Andrew Claven. This is The Andrew Claven Show. We'll see you tomorrow. The Andrew Claven Show is produced by Robert Sterling. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Senior producer, Jonathan Hay. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. Technical producer, Austin Stevens. Edited by Alex Zingaro. Audio is mixed by Mike Cormina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Alvera. And our animations are by Cynthia Angulo and Jacob Jackson. The Andrew Claven Show is a Daily Wire forward publishing production. Copyright forward publishing 2018.